Carmichael Basque, Holy Rosary Parish. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One, coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Dear Lord, we stand in the midst of nourishment and we starve. We dwell in the land of plenty, yet we persist in going hungry. Not only do we dwell in the land of plenty, we have the capacity to be filled with the utter fullness of Christ. In light of such possibility, what happens? Why do we drag our hearts, lock up our souls? Why do we limp? Why do we straddle the issues? Why do we live so feebly, so dimly? Why aren't we saints? Each of us could come up with individual answers to these questions. But could we suggest here a common cause? The reason we live so dimly and with such divided hearts is that we have never learned how to be present with quality to you, to self, to others, to experiences and events, to all created things. We have never learned to gather up the crumbs of whatever appears in our path at every moment. We meet all these lovely gifts including your love, only half there. Presence is what we are all starving for, real presence. We are too busy to be present, too blind to see the nourishment and salvation in the crumbs of life, the experiences of each moment. Yet the secret of daily life is this, there are no leftovers. There is nothing, no thing, no person, no experience, no thought, no joy or pain that cannot be harvested and used for nourishment on our journey to you. Dear Lord, on our journey towards you, help us to be present as you are present here. Amen. Good morning. Our second station comes from St. John's Anglican Church, and I'm Canon Kathy Morgan, the rector. A reading from Matthew 27, beginning at the 27th verse. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. They knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe, put his own clothes on him, then they led him away to crucify him.
us offer a prayer for our children. Let us pray. Lord, whose love and humble servants bore the weight of human need, who did on the cross forsaken show us mercy's perfect deed. We, your servants, bring the worship not of voice alone but heart, consecrating to your purpose every gift which you impart. Still your children wander homeless, still the hungry cry for bread, still the captives long for freedom, still in grief we mourn our dead. As, O Lord, your deep compassion healed the sick and freed the soul, use the love your spirit kindles still to save and make us whole. As we worship, grant us vision to your love's revealing light, till the height and depth and greatness dawns upon our human sight. Making the needs and burdens your compassion bears, bids us bear, stirring us to faithful service, your abundant life to share. Amen. Friends, Ken McCory here from St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. This is a difficult time for us. Uh, we're experiencing social isolation in our homes. We're missing some of the joyful things of the season that we would love to be sharing in together. It reminds me that on Good Friday, Jesus entered into the mystery of death. We don't fully understand what that mystery or what that gift was. We just know the rich benefit of it. But Jesus, in dying on the cross, didn't just die to this earthly life, but Scripture tells us he entered into separation from the Father, isolation himself. And so what we are experiencing this season is just a tiny hint, a little taste of what Jesus has done for us. And so in this time of struggle and strain, uh, take heart and know the gift that has been given for you. Hear these words from Matthew chapter 27. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down they kept watch over him there. Above his head they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their hands and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in each one of us is the capacity to hurl insults at you and our neighbors. Forgive us, dear Lord, for such hate. Wash away our hate, Lord Jesus, and give us a heart of love. On this journey as your people, give us the ability to take the great commandment literally. Lord Jesus, what if we loved our literal neighbors? Would it be possible, dear Lord, that the solution to our city's greatest issues could be solved through such love and obedience. Amen. Friends, here we are on our Good Friday walk at station number four. Station number four considers prayers for our city. We're at Trinity United Church here in Thorold, and I'm Jim McKnight, I'm the minister. The reading that we're going to be considering comes from the Gospel of Matthew, where Matthew describes the crucifixion of Jesus. Very often we think that the scene of the crucifixion is very isolated and quiet and lonely, 
But Matthew gives us a different picture. There are passers-by, and there are specific individuals there, and, and Matthew speaks to us of them. Hear what the Gospel writer has to tell us. In the same way that those who were passing along the road had jeered, shaking their heads in mock lament, the religious leaders, along with their scholars and the elders, were right there mixing it up with the rest of them, having a great time ridiculing Jesus. He saved others, he can't save himself. King of Israel, is he? Then let him get down from that cross. We'll all become believers then. He was so sure of God. Well, let God rescue his son now, if God wants him. He did claim to be God's son, didn't he? Even the two criminals crucified next to Jesus joined and joined in the mockery. Would you please share with me in a moment of silence? And in words of prayer, I say, Dear Lord, you know so well the mockery of those who don't know what they're doing, the jeers of prejudice and ignorance and fear, and all the ragged or respected forces that divide us. And in the midst, we hear your prayer, forgive them, heal them, bring the city's souls together in common cause to care for one another, to value one another, irrespective of religion, creed or color, status, sex or sexual identity. In the strength of your compassion, help us do our part to build with you a better city, to celebrate the gifts and differences we bring, to see your face in everyone we meet and pray the same for them in Jesus' name. Lord, heal our land and our city. Amen. Hey, I'm Terrence Gulster. I'm the pastor planter at the table in downtown Thorold. I'm going to read from Matthew 27, verse 45 to 50. The death of Jesus. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had crowd, cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. I want to share a prayer with you that I wrote a couple years ago. It's called A Prayer for Thorold, and it's to pray for the poor in our community. O oh God, our city calls out like one without a voice. She walks aimlessly in the street. She searches for her children, but will not find. The children lay in the laps of strangers. Her people grind her fingers. They have no reward for their work. Her treasures are swept up in vials. Her purity poured down the grate. She desires to bite fresh bread. Teeth missing, she starves. Her master rules over her with deception. Like a lure leading her to death. He bruises her hope. She loves the blows as her own. The city has experienced love but has forgotten its touch. How long, Lord, will you keep your embrace? When will you become our new master? When will you pour out new pursuits? How long before you become this city's treasure? Lord, hear the groans of our city. Listen to the cry of your children. Measure out a new work. Pour out vials of healing. 
forgive the city for selling itself. Cut new garments for her to be clothed. Give her fresh bread. Allow her to bite its freshness. O Lord, bring transformation. We pray for you to move. Withhold your eyes from her no longer. Rescue her from her despair. Amen. Station 6, Prayer for Community Organizations. Our reading is from Mark 15, verses 37 to 39. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, This man truly was the Son of God. Let us have a moment of silence. Prayers for Community Organizations Dear Lord, as you gave yourself for us, who are weak, may we too give ourselves for the poor. Lord God, May the greatest expression of our love be suffering with and for others, sacrificing ourselves for our neighbors, caring for the poor, lowering ourselves to hardship. Dear Lord, by your Spirit, help us to bridge the gap between the weak and the strong. Lord, help us to work together to serve our neighbors. Help us to serve in our organizations because you as a servant serve both in life and in death. You cared for those who were hurting and spent time with the outcast. You washed your disciples' feet, Lord Jesus. You put nothing before you but the necessity and advantage of others. Help us to do the same. Amen. Mark 15, 42 to 47. This all happened on Friday, the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath. As evening approached, Joseph of Arimathea took a risk and went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Joseph was an honored member of the high council and was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. Pilate couldn't believe that Jesus was already dead, so he called for the Roman officer and asked if he had died yet. The officer confirmed that Jesus was dead, so Pilate told Joseph that he could have the body Joseph bought a long sheet of linen cloth. Then he took Jesus' body down from the cross, wrapped it in cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been carved out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone in front of the entrance. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where, Joseph, where Jesus' body was laid. Our Father in heaven, give us the servant heart of Christ. Give us the willingness to take risks. Help us to serve 
like Joseph did. Help us to serve like the women at the, to- at the tomb did. Lord God, today Christ has no body but ours. No hands, no feet on earth but ours. Ours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on our homes, on our spouses, on our kids, on our friends, on our families, on our streets, on our neighborhoods. Ours are the feet through which he walks to do good. Ours are the hands through which he blesses all of the world. Christ has no body on earth but ours. Grant us the grace to be the body of Christ for such a time as this. Amen.